Welcome to Believe in 76ers with your host, former 76ers point guard Eric Snow and two Sixers fanatics in Marcus and Tasia Dash. Believe in 76ers is presented by betonline.ag. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from NFL playoffs to pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and much more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at BetOnline. With live betting options, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. BetOnline is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use promo code BELIEVE. That's B-L-E-A-V to receive your rewards. BetOnline.ag, where the game starts. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Believe in 76ers podcast. I'm Marcus Dash, here with legendary 76ers point guard, Eric Snow, and my brother, Tasia Dash. Gentlemen, how we all doing? Doing good, how are you? Good, good. Can't complain, can't complain. My, my Chiefs won this weekend, and the Sixers completed the uh, the, the, the 5-0 uh, road trip, the, uh, the Philadelphia Road Warriors, as I'm calling them this week. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about that. Yeah, good luck with that, man. I'm I'm just and I'm just enjoying um um football right now. My team isn't playing, but like I said before, if the Browns aren't playing, Eagles. um, you know, Eagles. Yeah. E A G L E. And I'm I'm rooting for the Eagles to Eagles. win NFC at least. <clears throat> yeah, well, Eric was I don't know how y'all eat Philly Sixers fans and then you Chiefs fans too. Like I don't I never really like I've thought about that. Like I don't really understand that dynamic. Like how that's we're also, from, we're also from Northern Virginia, so then it makes zero sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm just <laughs> you I never that. asked you guys that, but I'm just I, I always thought it like how are they so kids in uh, Philly? Like, I guess you could say origin story is um I became a Chief fan in like the early, early nineties. Um, the transition from like the Steve DeBerg to the Montana years, uh, the Christian O'Clay. So you liked them when my brother was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was playing Super Tabo Bowl when your brother was on that team, man. Um, and then we don't know how I became one. Our closest best guess is that our older brother is a diehard Raider fan. So we just think I took the opposite of what he, you know, what he liked. Um but there's no specific story about how it came about or anything. I just started collecting the cards, started playing them in video games, <laughs> just, you know, checking out. Back then, so why you, wouldn't you, take, you had to like, check up on box scores. You took the opposite. Why wouldn't you take, like, Denver? I mean, if you're a kid, that red pops, you know? Yeah. That red pops out. And then, yeah, from there on out, yeah. And then the 76ers, you can explain that one, too. 76ers, um, I followed. So I was like most kids around that age of the time, um, you know, uh, nine, eight, nine years old. I was I, I love Jordan. I love watching Jordan, um, root for Jordan. And then um, as he was coming to a close, uh, Iverson was killing it in Georgetown. And we're near that area. Uh, we're just outside of D.C. So um, I was following Iverson in Georgetown, loved him in Georgetown, root for him there. And when he got drafted by Philly, I kind of just – Adopted it and went and, and traveled, went with them to Philly, and then here we are. Yeah, I, I get you. I get what you're saying. I mean, I'll just you know, I was never, I was never a Washington Bullets fan. Just didn't do it for me. And then uh, Redskins at the time, um, now Commanders. Nah. Yeah, I mean, I grew up. I actually, when I was young, young, I was a Steelers fan. Hmm. Um, but as I got older, I realized I wasn't really a Steelers fan. It was just at that time that I really started watching football as a little child. They were winning and they were winning yeah. Super Bowls mm -hmm. like late 70s. Of, you know, when I was, you know, five or six years old, you know, Frank Blair's, Terry Bradshaw, Lindsay, yeah, I, I know Bradshaw, all these yeah. guys, man. So, so it's like Steelers, 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 but it, it was almost like the league was Steelers versus Cowboys. Like that's how it was kind of, you know, viewed. Um, Which is why there are so many cowboy fans everywhere. Yes, that's why it's a lot of Steelers fans. You know, to me. Too, yeah. And then, but as I grew up, like I didn't really follow the Sixers. I mean, follow the Steelers at all. 
mm-hmm. after that. Um, and I started paying more attention to the Browns. and But I always paid attention to them. I always knew everybody, all the players, and followed them and cared about when they left, you know, the, the team. You know, I, so I kind of like – I've always been a Browns fan. So um, as far as basketball, I was a Cavs fan. But I was a Sixers fan because of Dr. J being my favorite player. Oh, wow. Um, so I ended up playing for the two teams that I cheered for. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, it was it was the Sixers, and that's why growing up as Doc being my favorite and liking the Sixers, that's that's kind of how I developed the not liking Boston and the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how yep. that was kind of developed. And my dislike for the Cowboys was sort of like wanting Pittsburgh to win when I was a child. Yep. Um, and then, you know, and then the it just got worse when people start talking about the Cowboys. That just made it worse. And when they started winning in the 90s, yeah, it got even worse then, too. Um, yeah. No, even today, they don't even win. They still irritate them. I know. Um, yep. <laughs> so that's you sort of how. Either way. Uh, baseball. I guess this is the Guardians now, kind of a hometown team. So they they were rolling in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. If I had another team that I cheer I for love baseball, that Cleveland's team, the Cleveland yeah, team. If, if I had another team I cheer for, it was probably the Braves. Okay. Um, the little league team that I played for was the called the Braves. Okay. So we used to all watch them, and then I don't know if you guys remember, but they used to always come on TBS. Yeah, oh, yeah, a long time ago. So yep. at least we were able to see their games. Yep. Yeah, I think you know, like I know my children get spoiled with every game on national television. I know. They don't understand how you can only see games on certain days, and like you know, if even with the NFL, it was on Sundays, but you were only seeing your local game and one other game. <laughs> I used to watch uh, Bulls That's all games. You were watching. <laughs> I used to watch Bulls games on WGN and record that. Yes. Mm-hmm. And um, the next so that was cool. It, it wasn't local, but it felt like local because I could watch it all the time. So you know, that's what you know. I, it's just interesting. You know, <clears throat> started watching like the USA Network. I remember that from Hubie Brown having a little basketball drill show, and he used to I have Roy Sparrow and all those guys on TV. Oh man, I going through that drills. <laughs> That's great. I'm going way back. <laughs> yeah, man. I don't remember USA having sports stuff at I all. I think it was like USA or some network. It might not have been USA, but I know it was a network that was like out of New York. And we used to get into some Knicks games would come on, but UB Brown, like, like every weekend or whatever, had a um, show. I'm sure you can look it up. Like he had a, sh- a basketball drill show I got where they, right they talked about different drills and stuff like that. Wow. You looking at up, Tasia? Yeah, the Hubie Brown drill, uh, sh- shooting drill show. It was just dribbling. It was ball. It was like something different each week. Was it the Hubies? No, 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 no. no. That's something. That's something totally different. I'm trying to find it. Damn. No, these are actual, you, these are you, actual look, shooting drills. So I maybe I should have put a show. Look, look, USA Network show or something like that. See if that's it. And this is like way before all access with the mod were shot, right? Like this is way before all that. Yes, it was before a mod. Yeah. Now, I mean, I can remember a mod still playing. So I'm, you know, right. I'm a little way older than you guys because I remember watching the mod play. Mm-hmm. NBA on USA. <laughs> Man. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it was USA Network. I, it, it, if I don't remember what else, what other network it was, but it was we used to watch it. The NBA on USA, the USA Networks and NBA Basketball Association television coverage. It ran from seventy nine to eighty, and then eighty three to eighty four. Is that around the time? Yeah, I was younger. Yeah, yeah. Wow, they got it for one year each and lost it. Man, I want they, to play, they played Knicks games on that channel. Uh, <laughs> um. They had it was like a it was like a it was the de facto NBA, it was like a, NBA it was, coverage. It was like a Saturday morning like TV show, but he would just talk about 
different drills of how to play basketball or, you know, pivot foot, how to dribble, shooting, coming off screens. It was like something different every time. That's great. It's crazy. So they had 81 to 84 coverage at a three year deal for $1.5 million back then. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that won't even buy you a commercial to Super Bowl now. Yes. Um, They'd extend their two-year contract, total of 11 million. Yeah. U.S. aired 50, 35 to 40 regular season double headers on Thursday nights besides the regular season playoff action. They'd also broadcast the draft. I didn't I didn't know that. Um, Wow. That's crazy. So, then maybe basically TNT probably took that over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Al, Al Albert and Steve Jones, Al Albert, Hubie Brown. Man, wow. I still, I still need to see that 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 show though. There's gotta but, be clips on YouTube of it. Yeah, but that's great. <laughs> I, yeah, I didn't even know USA had that. Man, come a long way in the uh, NBA uh, television, <laughs> it's, it's sports world as a whole. I mean, we're talking about you know. Being able to only watch a few games on your local your local channels, and that's it. You know, some guys at USA old timers like, man, we had it. We had it at one point. We should have just kept it. It's like <laughs> a 20 year deal for like a hundred million. It would have worked out. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, USA only has what, like, as far as sports wise, I mean, but they, I think they had WWF for a little bit. I don't know if they even have that anymore. Do they get any of the college basketball games? They don't, right? Uh uh-uh. uh. No. No, that's that, that's owned by the Turner Networks. Yeah, that's, that's, true, that's true. That's right. That's right. They do. I think USA is owned by the NBC channels because I believe they play Olympics games, cer- certain Olympic events on the uh, USA uh, network, and which would yeah. which would make sense because uh, WWE's stuffs on like the Peacock app. So I think that's all like mm. connected in some way. But um, anyway, yeah, that's yeah. That's yeah and uh, and uh, Eric, I'll. I'll just, Tagging with Tasia, I just followed what Tasia was liking. So whatever he was watching, I was watching, and that was it. <laughs> I got his, I got his rebound question, hand me downs. Marcus was a smart boy. He didn't take the opposite of me. He chose to just go with the winners. <laughs> <Good to> <laughs> and of course, we're rooting for Andy Reid uh, Super Bowl. You know, Chiefs and Eagles. I think you know you you, you played in Philadelphia while Andy was there. I think it'd be, it'd be only right to have Philly and uh, Kansas City in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yep. All right. Sure, you guys would be happy. Oh we'll yeah, see. yeah. Oh yeah. Just a little bit. You got a <laughs> tough game facing you. We do, man. Everyone hope for the best here. Yep. Dean's ankle. <laughs> and, and the Philly fans, they, they have a rooting interest in this. They they want to see Andy Reid, you know, continue to do it to win. That's not that's no, not they like they're pretty against. No, they don't. They don't care about anything else except the Eagles winning. If they, they can't win, win though, is there anyone else that can win? Andy. Yeah. They don't care about anybody winning except the Eagles. True Philly fans don't care. They don't want no Andy Reid to win. They want the No, Eagles well, of course them. not. But if it was the Niners versus the Chiefs, they'd be rooting for the Chiefs, I assume. If Philly West. No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't root for anyone. That's a real Philly fan. You're not going to root for another team. That's I mean, not how they roll in Philly. Yeah. I will say it's hard to be liked – when you leave Philly and Reed is still beloved in Philly. That's not hard to be liked. You mean as a player or a coach? Player or coach, yeah. Yeah, I mean Chip I, Kelly's I think him. some cases it depends on how you leave. How you left? Yeah, that, that's yeah. true. That's true too. That's true too. I mean, I don't think Andy wasn't doing anything particularly crazy. It's just it was his time. No, it was t- yeah, it was time to part ways. Hey, I'm I'm glad for it. <laughs> it's good timing. Um, all right, so we're we're gonna transition over from the NFL talk to uh, some NBA talk. Um, so Sixers five and zero on the road trip. I know you guys at the last the last game. I you both you guys had had the had the Blazers in that last one or not the Blazers, Kings. the Kings. Um, yeah. and I, I think you I think one of you guys had Blazers against us too. So yeah, I, yeah, I picked you, you us did. to lose both those games. Yeah. yeah. They, it, that were defying odds here. Uh, Sixers went 5-0 and on this road trip. It's the first time we went undefeated in a West Coast road trip since 1985 uh, after beating the Kings um, at Sacramento. I know Sunday. we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Those LA trips, man. Eric was watching that on USA Network. <laughs> yeah, I know we did. <laughs> 
Um, so, and the cool thing was with, with that Sacramento game, I thought we were definitely going to lose when I saw Embiid and Harden were out for that game. Um, and we ended up winning that. That's probably one of the, the, one of the more impressive wins, in my opinion. But I want to ask you guys this, because um, we asked last week, what would be the most impressive win? And you guys said, if we were to go, if we were to ba- beat Sacramento, that'd be the most impressive win. So I'm going to ask you that question. Was it the most ex- impressive win of the road trip, especially without Embiid and Harden? Yeah. I mean, you know, the fact that you won that game, like you said, those two guys out, and the fact that Sacramento has been playing extremely well. Um, you, you know, last night they, you know, beat Memphis, even though Memphis had some guys out, but there's, you know, they're still winning their top three seed um, in the West. So, yes, it's a huge game. Um, you, you're pulling guys out. You, you're almost conceding that game when you're, you're pulling guys out for rest. Um, so yeah, I have to say that you, know, you come out with, with a victory in that game that, that, that became the biggest game. Um, yeah, I mean, I love the Kings winning with the top guys, uh, the last game of the road trip. That's why we predicted the loss. We just thought they were ready to go home. Um, I, I, I still have to go back to beating the best team out of that road trip on their floor, the Clippers. I just think the Clippers... Yet again, they're one of the more talented teams and dangerous teams in the league. Um, so beating them by double double digits at, at their home is is, is great. I, I I just think that's impressive as hell. I, I think um, especially after the way we we beat them the uh, the previous game at Philly where we came back, yeah, I think it was that much more important for us to really put a stamp in. And they had all their guys again, so it's not like they had guys out. So. We have two games against the Clippers with pretty much no excuses that we won. So, yeah. Uh, something about the Sacramento game that kind of stood out to a lot of people um, was Maxi kind of dominating, especially in that second half of that game. Um, and I don't know if that's more kind of having a, a little extra incentive to play like the way he did, Eric, because of, you know, moving to the bench role that he is now and he got a chance to start that game on Sunday. Uh, do you see that as more of kind of having that extra incentive to go out there and dominate whenever he does get those moments to start? No, I just think it was necessary to win. <clears throat> I mean, I think he was put in a position where the ball is in his hands and the ball was in his hands a lot because those guys were out and he produced. So if if the ball is in his hands and he's one of those players that once he gets the rhythm, like he's going to keep it going. Like yeah. He's going to keep trying to keep it going. So um, and it was just I just think the way it went, he got hot and they start rolling. And Sack was falling back, that it was just, you know, you just had to allow him and put him in position to stay aggressive. But <clears throat> that's what ha- that's why I've always said, I don't know why he's not a starter. Let's get back into a maxi conversation. That's what <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um he didn't start that game. So it's not bench points. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> um I think we have a we it's we have such a good team for staggering lineups and having certain guys sit out. We're so built for that right now. I almost think it's easier when we have less guys in yeah. the game. I mean, I do think that Sacramento's team kind of their personnel kind of played into our personnel, even with the with those two guys out. Yeah. Uh, I agree. You know, they they have some bonus. The bonus is their anchor. Yeah, they have, and they, he's sort of plays on the wing, and I mean the perimeter, and he, mm-hmm. he's not really pounding you down. So I, I I do think that there it was a personnel fit. I think that that team that we had would have struggled more against Portland than Sacramento. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Nurkic would have ate. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, with their length um, at certain positions and athletic ability, like then you got Dame and, you know, so, so I, just, I just really think that it it's all, it was a little bit about matchups too. Yeah. And the way we won too, I thought was really impressive. Like we we held on, you know, and, and most of that was Harrison foul trouble throughout like the second half. Yeah. Yeah. So made that run. Once we made that run in the second half and kind of got a rhythm, it was like you made it a really a one quarter game, and then you know you can win a game in a quarter, even mm-hmm. you know with reserves, um, and you know and with some starters, and 
especially if, if you have a guy that has it going. And that's what happened. You know, yep. I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think if that if that that team we put out there and it's their team played ten played a seven game series, we may not win that series. Yeah, yeah, but we can win that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the scary thing that uh, at the end of that game was the um, was they missed that free throw at the end uh, where Alex Len came out there and Sabonis bonus and Alex Len and like we just had a bunch of like what Tucker and, and Harold like six six eight guys and then to their <laughs> like their bigs which brings us into our, our next topic here. Um, so uh, Bleacher Reports Brian Toberek wrote an interesting article recently about how what we'll, a segue. Yeah, <laughs> we'll either have a rim roller defensive liability in, in Matras Harold. Or a combination of Tucker, small ball five, and defensive switching with Paul Reed backing up Embiid. Um, so the question everyone's been asking this, I feel like this is a question we've had a problem with since we were traded Drummond last year. You know, the DeAndre Jordan stuff last year, and just having that backup five. So are you comfortable going into the playoffs um, with the backup five situation that we had right now, or um, would you make a move before the trade deadline or pick up somebody in free agency? I mean, I'm comfortable because if if I look around the Eastern Conference, I, I don't I don't see that position um, where we need to address it. I, I just don't see unless we play Jokic in the finals. I, I don't see the need to address the position as far as getting bigger. Lopez can give you some issues, but they got him out on the perimeter, and he's not going to have as much volume with, mm-hmm. especially if Middleton is playing. Um, Boston, we know who gets the volume. The Cavaliers, their their wings, their guards get the volume. The Nets, we know who get the volume. So, so what 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 big guy that is going to really dominate you? Joel is that guy. So it's really nobody else in the Eastern Conference that I feel like you need to address that need or that position unless you can get a guy like DeMarcus Cousins because he's a center that can shoot threes and very talented. Outside of him, I don't know what else you can get that would be different from what you already have. Oh, Whiteside's another name that people float out there too. No, I I just – it was a firm no. no. No, the reason why I say no is because Whiteside has a size, but we're not going to take advantage of that size on the offensive end. Yeah. They would just be for defensive anchor purposes. Yeah, so then what, what? Then I don't think that it's going to be any different than what we already have because he's not going to be defending Joel. Yeah. He's not going to be defending a – center position is going to have a, a lot of volume is what I'm saying. Well, with Whiteside, you would just have a statue who can't switch. But what I'm saying is, but now he's we'll get not, in trouble. so you putting him in to, you know, to be an anchor, but who is he going to defend? Like he's not, he doesn't have a high volume guy. So he's going to be defending the guy most likely that's setting screens and rolling or popping and shooting. He's not, not you know, maybe like I said, it's outside of maybe Lopez, but Lopez We'll see white side, and he's popping out to the three, shooting threes. Yep. And most of the time, I feel like teams are going big to accommodate guarding Joel. And when Joel's off the floor, like, phew, now we can go back yes. to our normal they, lineup. Yes, they go small. So what, what's, what's the point of putting someone who can't There's really no, guard no team is going to go big. their lineups? You'll see Lopez and Bam. No no team is going to go big. Maybe Joel. like maybe like Boucher, but he's all like 130. So it's like <laughs> – He's not body anyone up down there. I yeah, mean, I'm just saying, like, no, none of those guys are 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 high volume guys. Yeah, Joel and Joker. That's it. So that's why I say you don't. If it's not Demarcus Cousins, I I don't see how or why you address it. Um. Yeah, I was thinking white side too, but again. That's a problem in itself. So every situation is flawed, right? With wide side, you'd have uh, an anchor down low who can't switch. Um, not really an offensive threat at all, right? Uh, with with Harrell, you have an offensive big man undersized who can't really play D. 
And then um, with Reed and Tucker, you have a guy who you have guys who can switch and play more of a small ball five, um, but who aren't who have flaws in a lot of parts of their games. Right. Like Reed, for all he, he makes a lot of young bonehead and experienced plays. Um, not great offensively, but great hustle, great rebounding. Um, so it's like any way you look at it, there's problems, but I like your line of thinking that go with what, because we're all talking about the playoffs at this point. This isn't for regular season anymore. Playoff wise, you want to go against who you're going to be facing. I would say the best combination would be an offensive Harrell. And then if you want to go more defensive switch, you go read or small ball five Tucker. I think that will benefit us more there than going. You you go, you sign white side. We'll get done up in one. He'll come in. They'll pull him out and he'll get killed on, on, on the uh, three point line. And then we won't play in the rest of the playoffs. That's what would happen with him. Most likely because who else is going to come in? Who else are they going to bring him in for? So I, I don't know. I would rather go for another position and, and not go for big and and, and keep the Harold slash uh, Reed um, Tucker small ball five. Go by matchup. I'm going to th- throw a name at, at you guys. Um, so last week, I think the Bucks said they were going to try a trade um, uh, Serge Ibaka to grant him uh, his request to get, get out of there. Uh, the Nets have inquired about him, and they said a few other teams have inquired about uh, Serge Ibaka. Is that someone that you think would do the job that we're talking about here, or, or no? Serge fits. He, he, he would he would, he would would be a little slightly bigger and more experienced. I mean, he would – it would basically be him and Farrell. Yeah, that would be getting rid of the- he, he could push Reed out is what yeah. he would do. Exactly. Um, I, I mean, yeah, I, I would also be a fan of, but this again, I've always wanted to bring Nerlens Noel back for backup five minutes. Um, yeah, the defense, and he can he can do you know. An yeah, alley- I mean, but he's not available. He's- he can alley you. Well, I think everyone's available on Detroit. Let's be honest here. They're not. They're not holding on to anybody except. Yeah, for I mean, but he comes year. with you know. He's, he's not a minimum salary guy. What is his salary actually? I'd like to know that. Hmm. Is he a minimum salary guy? Or no, I think he. No, I don't think he is a. Minimum. Oh, he came with from the Knicks with a contract. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he may. He still makes pretty good money, so it wouldn't be worth it. Yeah, yeah he makes nine. Nope. Well, and, I, and I believe the last time we played um, Detroit, he had some good comments to say about Philly. He said that, like, you know, he's happy to see where the, where the team has gone and he's happy with the legacy that Hinky's left behind with Embiid um, in Philadelphia. So, I mean, yeah. hey, I, I'd welcome a Nerls and a well, uh, um, welcome him back maybe in the offseason or something if he's available. Well, there's a club option for next season at nine million, and I don't think they're going to pick that up. So he might have an opportunity to come back in a few months. <laughs> I'd be a bad. I think, he, I think we'll he is see. a good backup because he's a good. He, he, he get the alley oop rim running rim running game, rim running game rim with game. Harden, and he can also defend and he can switch a little bit too. He's not. I mean, he's not as you know agile as what he was when he was a kid, but mm. he can still move. He can still deflect. But yeah, I mean he's not realistic now, so there's a moot point. Um, yeah, I would I would lean towards keeping what we have and not going for a white side. Yeah. Could, could you guys see I know Bucks we are we're competing with the Bucks. So would you even see uh, Bucks trading Ibaka to a team of the rivaling in the East? Would would they do something like that or no? No. Okay. Unless they think he's hot garbage and they're like, yeah, 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 take him, play him, play him a lot. I, I would think I would think that they would Release him and he gets picked up. Yeah, uh, release him at a certain date where he can get picked up before the you know before the playoff pickup deadline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, the two centers that have been uh, kind of a, a lot of teams been monitoring uh, Nas Reed um, from the T Wolves, and then also yeah. uh, well, Nas Reed would be a great backup big. Yeah, yeah, but, absolutely. So Nas Reed and Serge Ibaka are the two big names right there that a lot of teams are inquiring about. So, but I think they could probably get more for. I mean, they can get something for Nas Reed for sure, though. That's not going to be some like dump, I don't think. No, the the big name for that, the, the Nets are the ones inquiring about both those guys. That's the. That's the 
Yeah. But we'll see with that. And talk about the Nets leads us into our final. That'll be a great Another segue. Good segue, today. Marcus. Great segue today. You're on it today, man. <laughs> um, final topic here. Uh, we got game picks. Um, and so we had the Nets and Sixers won, but we haven't really had a Embiid and Simmons matchup yet. And I know it's Embiid and Simmons, you know, the Sixers versus Nets. But tomorrow night, the line hasn't come out yet on this game. Uh, so we're still waiting to see what the line is for this one. Uh, but uh, you got Embiid versus Simmons for the first time together on the floor um, since the Hawks game, um, yeah. which is kind of crazy. Wow. Um, been a while. Um, so crazy. two questions for you guys. Who do you guys have? And is this just another game? Um, I have the Sixers winning. I mean, we we need to win it, um, especially from tiebreakers and fighting for positions. So, yeah, um, this game has really been important, and you got to take advantage of them while KD's out. Um, I think it's a big game because of that. I, I don't think it's a big game because Joel's playing against Ben per se. For the first time, I think it's more now because of the stakes. I think the stakes have kind of passed all the other stuff that was going on. Now, Ben will always have a warm reception every time he comes back to Philly. Um, that's not going to change, but I think people are kind of moving past that right now. I'm kind of thinking like, hey, this, you know, we're fighting for position. You know, so I would think that that's kind of the priority or gets the gaining the most attention right now. It's tough, man. Everyone in the East keeps winning. It's it's, it's tough to gain ground on anybody. Like if you look at the all the the look at the top six teams or even the top eight teams, none of them have a below five hundred last ten games. The yeah. worst is five and five. And I mean, that's crazy. So it's really hard to gain you ground. don't because if you don't you look at the Pacers, they went from like fifth to where <laughs> Like almost out. <laughs> well, that that's the next team. It's funny, ironically enough, that's the next team on that list who is below five hundred out of the top ten. Uh, they they yeah. they're two and eight in their last ten. So yeah. you can see what happens when you lose a few games. You you yes. you fall, man. You fall big time. Um, it took us a long time to climb up these rankings, man, because everyone kept winning games, and we were we're still killing it right now. I mean, we're five in a row, eight and two in our last ten. Um, this is a big game because this would put us. This would put us a game. This would put us two games above uh, Brooklyn, which is nice. Um, and we already beat them once. Do we play them before that? No, that was the first time we played them, right? So we'd be two and zero against them this season. Yes. Okay. Um, very important game. Uh, I think we do win. I think we. Um, I think we lay it on. I think we won. I, I think we're still. Because the the guys that ki got killed last year didn't play in the last game. Mm -hmm. We were missing, was it Embiid and Harden? Both out? He, yeah. I think so. Uh, so they haven't gotten that blood that they, they they still want. In their minds, like, yeah, we beat them without that. But, you know, and I'm sure Brooklyn wants us because Brooklyn had all their guys for that game and we still won. So I'm sure they're like, we want to do that to them now. So... I, we come out hard as if they have everybody, and you and you you know you 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 go full throttle. Um, I don't think the Simmons thing's a big personally. I don't think it's a big deal anymore. I think, man, Simmons stats are brutal. I think he's just like they're just letting him fry over there and be like, man, that's your problem now. He's so far out of our minds. I'm glad we don't hear a lot of Simmons Sixer stuff anymore. Let him deal with getting his engagement ring back. The poor guy, he's got his own problems right now. So. Um, Shots fired. I mean, he is so uh, uh, was it eight hundred thousand dollar or whatever yeah, it was. I don't know. One hundred eighty thousand dollar engagement ring. I, 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 I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get TMZ his hundred eighty thousand. He's trying. I'm TMZ. You know, it's, it's the T stands for Tasia. Um, I think it's one hundred eighty thousand dollars. So he's trying to get that money back, dude. So, um, he's got his own. I didn't make a joke though. I was like, you know, I was like, you know, maybe he should involve you know Rich Paul and try to recoup that money like he did from the Sixers. Um, <laughs> almost a $1 million engagement ring, dude. Um, he's good at breaking engagements. What can I say? <laughs> Another good one. <laughs> Damn. Shots fired. Yeah, you, you haven't gotten over this whole Simmons thing. It's pretty, pretty obvious. 
No, no, yeah. I, I'm I mean, okay. I mean, he yeah, said people move past it, but I was <laughs> <not> everybody. <laughs> Let me make a couple of jokes, right? Uh, he's got commitment problems, commitment folk. Um, I'm glad it's beyond that. I just, you know, when I'm, tomorrow we're beating them, I'm like, like, ha ha, Simmons. But then again, that's because he's having a rough season. If Simmons were, if they were to be up by 15 tomorrow and Simmons has a triple double and like smiling and laughing up, I'm going to be furious again. Yeah. So, I only feel this way because, you know, he's kind of like a lim- limping antelope right now. And mm-hmm. I, I don't see him as a threat in the jungle. Mm-hmm. But if he were, I would be pissed off again. So, yeah. Uh, but I do think we win. Um, I think we win handily. Yeah. Looking at the, uh, you mentioned the Eastern Conference standings. Uh, if you look at the top 13 teams, only one team has a, a losing record in the last 10 games, and that's the Indiana Pacers. The top 13 in the East. That's crazy. crazy. It is crazy. Um, he's, yeah, he's, uh, he's not least anymore. No, no, a hundred percent. Um, if you look at that, uh, when we played them the last time we played them, that was November 22nd. Uh, the Nets, uh, we were that Maxi Harden and Embiid in that game. And Maxi, uh, damn, okay, wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. Harris had 24, Melton had 22, uh, Milton 16, Paul Reed 19, and Niang 16. So we we had a lot of contributors that night. Wow. Everyone was contributing. Wow, so, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully we win. I'm curious what the seat with this line is going to be. I don't know. I, I wonder why they're waiting. Maybe see if there's any like late inactives or something. But playing, yeah, yeah, probably. If, if this is the lines for a lot of the other games tomorrow night, it's not our game. Which I don't know. Must have guys in the injury report. Not yeah, ready. maybe with a full go. But yeah, hopefully, hopefully we steal another uh, win and uh, rise in the Eastern Conference. Continue to, to get closer to the the, uh, the Celtics, and hopefully the Celtics keep having blunders like they did last night against the Magic. Let's continue that. I want to see some more of that happen. Let's mm-hmm. see that Magic. <laughs> yeah. all right but all right fellas well like that's it for us thanks for tuning in to believe in 76ers presented by bet online we'll see you guys friday as we discuss uh the aftermath of this game and also preview the uh the Jokic and mb to match up it's gonna it's like the mb feud week it's like a rivalry week for our guy mb <laughs> right yeah <laughs> all right guys we'll see you on friday all right, take it easy later